What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, reviewing today, The Witcher 3 on Nintendo Switch. You know, even after having played this, I'm still just in complete shock that this game is actually real. The fact that, well, CD Projekt Red managed to take one of the biggest RPGs that's ever been created and actually putting it on a handheld machine. Today, what I want to do is actually go through this game piece by piece and analyze whether this is really worth the price. It is $60 here in America for a game that is a couple years old, but it does include some DLC, some interesting things, and honestly, some graphical changes. Let's begin by addressing the technical aspects of this version, because I know a lot of us were actually most concerned by that. When I saw the first trailers, I was actually extremely nervous that this would be a very drastic downgrade. But now that I've played it, I can say that the graphics are definitely not as shiny, but I wouldn't go so far as to say they're bad. Now, I want to do some side-by-side -side comparison just real quick with the PlayStation 4 Pro. So I own this on every system and PC, and I enjoy playing it on everything but mostly on my PS4 Pro. Well, when you see things like the graphical detail of, like, environments, leaves, people, sunsets, you can definitely tell that on the PS4 Pro, it was a stunning little gem. It was something that really managed to push the tech. And I definitely think that when you're seeing it on Switch, it is still pushing the tech, but it's definitely much weaker hardware. Now, you are going to be able to play this handheld, so it's something that, honestly, I'm worth paying that price. I think that being able to make these sacrifices and still play it on the go is absolutely worth it. But let's talk a little bit more about playing it docked. This is, well, the raw graphics. This is a game that just begs you to explore and do side quests and talk to that next random NPC. And when I was actually playing it, my major concern was that the graphics would actually hurt some of the major storyline elements. The writing in this game is fantastic. There are so many times where you're just trying to sit down and interrogate somebody and there's this almost verbal jousting as people trade these really clever jabs. I, I really think that this has some seriously unmatched storytelling and I was honestly a little bit afraid that having some really really downtrodden visuals might hurt this, that it might actually affect some of the bigger story beats but it absolutely doesn't. Like at one point I'm actually called to this giant estate up in the mountains and as you're approaching you can see all these people literally crawling as they bleed to death. It's a really impactful moment that really kind of strikes you with the fear of the fact that maybe some monsters are so dangerous that even the Witcher can't handle it. And so I like the fact that even though there is obviously lower resolution textures and a little bit of a blurry effect, it all still really comes through. But let's just talk about Witcher itself. Let's talk about why this game is so fantastic. Now if you're worried, I've never played Witcher 1 or 2. Will I understand Witcher 3? Yes, absolutely. It is a fully self-contained game. Now, if you played the other things or actually read the books, you're going to get more out of this. But even still, even as a standalone project, this is so freaking sharp. I love The Witcher 3. It's easily one of my very favorite of all the modern RPGs. It's just so expansive and well-crafted. But more than that, it's just fun. It's nice to be able to live in a world that's so dangerous that if you actually just get off your horse and walk in a random direction, you can almost almost immediately find a fight, whether it's giant rabid dogs that are in the woods and trying to eat you, or if you actually are trying to investigate the docks, perhaps these little ocean zombies will crawl up on shore and try and consume your very delicious flesh. That is what's so great about The Witcher though, is that it seems like a world that absolutely needs saving. Now basically, the general storyline is the fact that we're playing as a person that's called The Witcher. Now this is actually a job in this universe where basically, since there are so many nasty beasties that exist out in the environment, most people can't handle it. These things are just so overwhelmingly dangerous that a typical normal human doesn't really stand a chance, especially not if you're a random farmer. So instead, society has decided to do the small evil for the greater good. They basically take orphan children that have been abandoned and imbue them with all sorts of dark magics to give people that have super strength and tougher skin and better healing and well, it makes the Witcher. These people are trained since pretty much birth to be the ultimate assassins for taking out the trash that nobody else can 
deal with. And what I've always liked is the way that this story really handles itself. Our main character, Gerald, he's kind of treated like the villain. People are basically trembling as soon as they see him because he is just such a creepy figure. Even his just general appearance is so kind of off-putting to people with his pale white skin and jet white hair and cat-like eyes. As soon as people see him, a lot of times there are actual humans in the street that just try and kill you on sight because they're so afraid. They're literally attacking as an act of defense. And so it's interesting to watch how the layers get peeled back, how we learn more about this, well, anti-hero, how he actually deals emotionally with trying to save a society that simultaneously sort of despises him. Now, the one thing that I've actually heard a lot of people complain about, especially recently, is there is a very peculiar combat system. Now, I actually think it works well, but when you're fighting in The Witcher, it's very, very rigid. It feels much more like simulation-style combat. You have fast attacks and you have weak attacks, but by actually specializing your character, you can do all sorts of special moves and use adrenaline or magic, which are these special signs to light people on fire or actually mind control particular enemies. And for some reason, it seems like a lot of people actually think that this is just not fluid enough, that since the rest of the game is just so polished and pristine, people think that the combat doesn't really feel as good. And I completely disagree. I love The Witcher combat. I, even when I'm actually losing against a boss over and over again, and I'm having to try and roll dodge in a corner to eat another biscuit and get a little bit more of my health back, that to me is when the game is working. I like the fact that this game manages to make you feel afraid. It manages to make it where every fight can be lost. Even if I'm actually just fighting a bunch of bandits, this is like a bandit clan that's trying to assault a village and I'm helping these local knights fend them off. This is pure humans that are just here trying to attack people and guess what? Actually engaging in that combat feels so good because there is a really nice balance of consequences. Risk versus reward. Learning how to actually survive these different fights and of course the different weaknesses of the crazy monsters we have to fight is a huge appeal of this game and it's greatly expanded by the fact that this version on Nintendo Switch includes all of the downloadable content. Now the main story of The Witcher 3 can take you about 60 hours to finish or about 100 hours if you're taking your time and doing side quests. But wait, there are actually two additional downloadable content packs called Heart of Stone and Blood and Wine. These are each each an additional 30 to 50 hours of content that are all in one freaking package. Okay, but I know what you're saying. How am I going to actually play this much? If I actually have this on my Switch and I'm trying to treat this simply as an upgraded Game Boy, how is it actually going to operate? Well, let me show you. This is actually one of the first main bosses. It's like the Griffin. And so I decided to beat him fully in handheld just to see if it was possible. If actually seeing this action on a tinier screen would at all hamper the gameplay. And it doesn't. The visuals are still ultra ultra crisp and my major concern was actually the battery life. This does drain your juice. I'm not going to pull your leg here. It's definitely a real hardcore battery sucker. This is the Switch model that actually has the upgraded battery life and it still seemed like it didn't last more than about 5 hours with a full charge all the way down to dead. Essentially, this puts it roughly in the ballpark of every other giant open world RPG. The Nintendo Switch is good, it has some very efficient power within it, but eventually the batteries are going to drain and you're going to have to just plug it into a wall or play it docked for a while until it's able to boost itself back up. I guess the only issue I have with this, uh, in this port, uh, I think that most of it is exceptionally good, but there is some pop-in issues. Occasionally, it seems like the game, it does have a little bit longer loading time, but not much. In fact, I'd actually say I'm kind of surprised by the fact that things manage to go as smoothly as they do, but there's this weird thing where the game will like start a cutscene, but then in the background it'll start trying to finish loading stuff. So you'll notice a couple little extra things pop in, or occasionally you'll be like dramatically looking at a sign, and it'll literally just like grow in front of you. It's not a giant detriment, but it's definitely one of those things where you have to realize this is definitely a downgraded version. Is it worth the price? In my opinion, absolutely. But let's try and look at this overall and go over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving The Witcher 3 on Nintendo Switch a 9.5 out of 10.
This project absolutely had to have been made by some sort of magic. I still just can't even believe that they managed to put a game this massive onto a tiny little handheld, but I guess that's just the glory of the future. Thanks so much for watching gamers, if you enjoyed this video please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already, but do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. And yeah, I'm sure you guys are going to laugh at me a little bit in the comments because when I first saw the trailers, I thought this game looked really downgraded and it actually turned out pretty good. So I'm willing to admit that I screwed up and I'm glad I bought it for sure. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.